Hey everybody, this is Kevin.com Brown from the Emmy Award winning 30 Rock, and you know what? I wish I had 30 Rocks to throw at Mr. Media's ass. Yeah! Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to John Lovett, executive producer and co-creator of the Thursday night NBC sitcom 1600 Pen. Stick around. I'm still working on a way to make this conversation all about the sequester. We're strippers. Haven't really decided yet. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview. The show is brought to you today by Amazon.com, the world's greatest store for everything from books and movies to computers, TVs, and even my favorite soft drink, Pepsi Wild Cherry. Thinking about buying something online from Amazon or just want to do a little window shopping? You can save yourself a lot of money and help support Mr. Media, that's me, by clicking on one of the Amazon ads at MrMedia.com and start your shopping with us. Get yourself the new iPad or Kindle Fire. Feeling a little racy today? Amazon's got what you need to feel exciting and new, as they used to sing on The Love Boat. Remember, start your next shopping trip from the comfort of your own home, car, hotel, or office with Amazon.com at MRmedia.com. That's right, MrMedia.com. And folks, thanks for your support. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of former presidential speechwriters who went on to successful careers in television. I'm looking at you, Pat Buchanan, Ben Stein, and Peggy Noonan. Wait a minute. They're all Republicans. Damn. I hope Lovett isn't listening yet. In the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. So, I was all set to ask John Lovett a bunch of predictable questions about making the transition from being one of President Obama's speechwriters to producer of a TV show about a fictional president of a fictional country in a fictional world capital. When the real-life actor who plays the son of said fictional president showed up on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno a week ago, making his case on national television to play the overweight son of Han Solo in the new Star Wars movie. He was basically pleading with director J.J. Abrams for a job. So now I'm left having to ask Lovett about the appropriateness of Josh Gad, one of the stars of his Thursday night at at 9.30 p.m. NBC show 1600 Pen, to be begging for work at a time when his existing gig is unfortunately struggling a bit in the ratings. I figure... It's already got to hurt to see the show that preceded you, 30 Rock, retire, just as you're getting started, and the one that followed you for all of two weeks, the bizarre drama Do No Harm, go in the tank to historic proportions before being yanked. And what does 1600 Pen, sitting there innocently, have to look forward to? Being the lead-in for Law & Order SVU reruns, and then the debut of Hannibal? Yikes. John Lovett, welcome to Mr. Media. (laughs) <laughs> that, was, uh, that introduction got pretty sad at the end. <laughs> well, what is, I, I just, I'm like, what is going on at that crazy network where you work? My goodness. Yeah, yeah. All, all, you know, all, my job is to make a, uh, uh, a, a, a really funny show, and I think we've done that. So, you know, our hope is that people, people are watching it. It, it's got to be tough. How about and that? I, I, don't want, I don't want to dwell on this too much, but it's got to be tough some days sitting there having no control of what's before and after you and seeing what's coming before and after you. Um, you know, look, I think everybody, you know, obviously, you know, you want, you want your show to succeed and you want it to have it the best lead possible. I mean, what's really great is they have put us after um, the office and, and, and that is, you know, as, as, as good a lead-in as you can get. Um, on NBC, so uh, you know what we're hoping is that you know whatever's around us isn't really something you're right that we can control. All we can control is that is the show that we've made, and and the thing that's really gratifying is that when we've been on you know a few weeks in a row, we start to build an audience, and so our hope is now over the next couple of weeks, you know people are really going to start finding the show because you know I think it's it's it is the right balance of of it's it's got heart, it's it's I think you know without without too, you know patting myself on the back, I, I do think it is a sharp, funny show, and I think it's, it tells the kind of big stories that, that'll engage a lot of people. So, you know, our hope is, you know, whatever, whatever else is going on around us, that people will be drawn to the show. And the really, the really awesome thing is, it, uh, you know, I think people were unsure of what kind of show this is going to be. I mean, there was a sort of a negative reaction online uh, to the promos and to some of the, um, to some of the advertisements. 
Uh, but as people have watched the show, I think, first of all, we surprised a lot of people that, you know, this is, uh, uh, in some ways, it's, it's, um, I think it's, it's an unexpectedly smart show. Mm-hmm. I think people, people see a show about the White House and they expect to hear hail to the, sh- hail to the chief and then a record scratch. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think people are, are pleasantly surprised by the show that we've got. And um, that, so now just, you know, the more people that watch, the more fans that we have and the more people that are kind of spreading a really positive word of mouth. And, you know, it, that's all that we can do and we'll see what happens. If you Look, could, I, you know, if you could, there are Senate offices that need a speechwriter. So <laughs> I can always go back. <laughs> There's a lot of those. If, if you could, would you like to switch slots with Community and be the 8 o'clock show and, move, and, and see them move to 930? It just seems like that's the very adult show. And you've got a show that, I mean, the family could sit down and watch your show. There's no reason they couldn't. No, they totally could. It is an, it's absolutely a family show. Look, uh, you know, I will, I, I, um, I am not in the TV scheduling department. Um, I, uh, I've just barely figured out how to make a comedy, so <laughs> I will leave the scheduling to others. Uh, you know, I'm, there's only so many things I can learn in a year. Uh, so, John, what, what's been the, the hardest part about, you know, going from the world of D.C. and politics to Hollywood, and which is more cutthroat? Uh, you know, I would say, first of all, politics is more cutthroat. Mm. Um, I am that there is a there is a definitely a uh 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 a lot more uh i feel like the stakes in dc feel higher and i think so a lot of people are uh, a little bit more um uh a little bit more confrontational than they are out in hollywood there's definitely a uh uh I mean, although you know look in both places people will smile to your face while <laughs> while uh uh preparing to 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 uh not be your friend uh, but uh, that's a nice uh, way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was being political. Um, but uh, uh, I think you know, it's been it's been a really interesting ride. You know, I've been I, uh, I always had this sort of you know, for lack of a better word, it was sort of you know this or, you know an ambition. I mean, it was a dream to you know trying to figure out some way to make make a comedy or, or be involved in comedy in some way. Um, and it's been this like you know, I feel like uh, I feel a lot like uh, over the past year and a half, I kind of got downloaded how to make a TV show like in the matrix, mm-hmm. um, like directly into my brain. Uh, so I've learned an incredible amount and it's been this incredible ride. Uh, and uh, you know, I think one of the things that I think if, if you would have talked to me before I came out to LA to make this show about why so many TV shows fail, why so much I think appeals, you know, why, why so many shows seem to appeal to the lowest common denominator or, or, uh, just aren't that great. I would have had a hundred reasons about, about you know the way things are way 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 uh, you know studios cater to the wrong audience or the way people you know don't know what people like or you know are or or I'd have had a dozen reasons but none of them would have would have been what I think is ultimately true which is making a good show is just really really hard mm-hmm. and you know I, I've become much more respectful and much more um, appreciative of just the art of crafting any kind of a show, you know, to tell any kind of story in 21 minutes and 30 seconds is really, really difficult. And I think, you know, uh, um, uh, I think that that has been sort of one of the most interesting things that I've learned. And I think one of the things I'm most proud of is that this idea that we have that, you know, you know, an ordinary family in an extraordinary place, a, a, a family show in this political world, uh, in, our, in, our, in our original conception, it was sort of, is it possible? Is this a great will this be a great place to tell these kinds of family stories? Can we, you know, kind of reinvigorate these sort of, these, these family dynamics in this strange environment, and will that yield great comedy and great, great TV stories? And I think the thing that's been the most gratifying is that it has, and that we're, you know, really proud of the product and really proud of the show that we've made. That we think it's a really, it's an incredible cast. The writing has been, you know, I've, I've been so... Uh, you know, proud to work with so many great writers on the show. Um, you know, Jason Weiner, who's directed the pilot, and, and I think you know more than two dozen episodes of Modern Family, has given the show an incredible look, and it just is so well directed. I mean, the whole thing came together so well, and we're so proud of it. You know, Mike Royce, who was uh, one of the executive producers producers of Everybody Loves Raymond, uh, came on board, and he's also been an incredible asset in helping us, you know, shape the show and. This team is incredible. The product is something we're all so proud of, and so now we're just really hoping that you know more and more people will find the show over the next couple of weeks. 
Well, John, one quick last question before you have to go. Uh, Bruce Campbell uh, uh, made an appearance uh, last week as Bill mm-hmm. Pullman, as the, the brother of the president, played by Bill Pullman. Will he be back? Yeah. Uh, we'd love to have him back in the future. He'll absolutely, you know, if we, you know, if we're lucky enough to come back, he'd, he'd definitely be somebody we want to have back. You know, we have these, we have amazing guest stars coming up. Henry Winkler is in a couple weeks uh, playing a, uh, playing a, um, a senator, actually, you know, to, to our earlier conversation, a senator that's nice on the surface, but maybe, uh, you know, <laughs> but his behavior uh, isn't so nice. Uh, and he comes on, he doesn't, he is, it is, he comes on screen and you just can't help but laugh. The same thing with Bruce Campbell. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we, Pe- you know that that was you know also so many people were willing to come be part of the show because they saw the scripts and they saw that what we were trying to do and they really got excited about it which was really exciting it was really just awesome and 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 you know humbling and you know a, sort of a dream come true well uh folks listen you can find 1600 pen co-created and produced by john lovett every thursday night at 9 30 p.m on nbc and you can see all kinds of behind the scenes videos from the show at nbc.com john uh good luck with the show and thanks so much for joining us mr media today Thanks a lot for having me. All right, good luck. Thanks. Bye-bye. People, watch the show. Yeah, watch the show, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate it if you'd show some love from Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Maron, Here's the Thing with Alec Baldwin, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons, the TechCrunch headlines, and the Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, BlackBerry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash mrmedia. That's stitcher.com slash mrmedia. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party, please consider calling 1-800-DIAL-DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. You can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening. Today's episode of Mr. Media Interviews is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. You know GoDaddy.com from their wild and sexy commercials, but isn't it time you actually test drove their web hosting and domain registration services yourself? For a limited time, Mr. Media listeners can save 10% on the already low price of web hosting services at GoDaddy.com by entering the promo code POD4 at checkout. Again, that's 10% off web hosting when you go to GoDaddy.com and enter the promo code POD4, that's P-O-D, the number 4, at checkout.